Hey everyone, so just a few days back, Sony released a new episode of its State of Play series, concentrating on the upcoming release of Gran Turismo 7, with Kazunori Yamuchi in fine form, presenting a 30-minute look at the game. Lots to discuss here. Joining me to talk about it, first of all, John Linneman. Rich, I, I enjoyed Kaz's suit, so uh, <laughs> I think that was, he looked very sharp in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and of course, Alex Battaglia. I was a big fan of the ray-traced cars right behind him. That, that was the thing that mm. stuck out to me right away. That was cool. Yeah, at the risk of typecasting you as the ray-tracing man. Nah, that's uh, okay. I didn't want to bring that up, but you did, so thank you. <laughs> Um, let's talk about first impressions, because um, obviously we've seen the game in the past, but we've not had an extended look quite as impressive as this one. So initial thoughts from you, John. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Gran Turismo. It's a, clearly an extension of GT Sport in terms of what they're doing visually, uh, but it's obviously a much more complete gameplay package now, more like traditional GT games. So it is a proper Gran Turismo 7 in that sense. Uh, I'm a big fan of what they're doing with the lighting, the materials again, which was first rate in GT Sport. I love their weather and sky system. I think the sky system might be one of the best we've ever seen in a game. But there are still some caveats that we have to raise today. I think definitely some visual oddities we noticed, as well as some inconsistent performance. So it looks good overall, I think, and we'll talk about that. But there's definitely some things to watch out for. Alex, your thoughts? I love the fact that they had this presentation at all because it was a long-formed explanation of their vision for the game. Uh, they showed off uninterrupted gameplay. They showed the game warts and all, explained all the new technical aspects that they thought were defining. Uh, well, you know, most of the forward-looking ones. There's also some implicit ones that they don't explain, but it's good to see. This is what I prefer for presentations. I don't like highly directed trailers. I do not like CGI BS. This is exactly how I love to see games presented. So it's great. Absolutely, yeah. We are at the point now where we're just weeks from uh, release and we hadn't really seen too much of the game. And this was a chance for the developer to express their vision fully. And I think they did a fantastic job of that. And I think they also did a great job of just lingering, right? Because as you say, Alex, we are in this sort of situation where a lot of developers seem to want to impart too much in too short a time. They don't have the chance to actually show us the game, to, to let us get to know the game a little bit. And this is what really shone through on here. They really did just um, go for it in terms of features, in terms of showing off the visuals, in terms of uh, almost walking us through the game. And I agree with you, John, that this was very much a case of expressing that this is a return to the full Gran Turismo experience, right? And um, there was so much in it. I mean, even to the point where, and I have to admit, I did groan a little bit of this, the license tests are back, yeah. <laughs> which uh, I, I've never been a fan of particularly. I mean, I recognize why they're there, but you know, it's just kind of like expressing that um, this is a proper full-blooded Gran Turismo experience, which is going to be presented using next generation technology. And I think it looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk first of all about the visuals. Um, native 4K is confirmed. Temporal anti-aliasing in place, yeah. which I was looking fantastic. There are a number of features and flourishes that we should probably spend some time talking about, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. I think once again, so the start of the show with this was true in sport as well, but essentially, I feel like nobody doing driving games has a command of the details quite like Polyphony Digital when it comes to the cars themselves. Like they really just nailed the the look and feel of the various materials and the way they intersect and layer upon one another. I mean, obviously the car paint is one thing and that's excellent, but all the other bits that make up a car, like the little like plastic details, the, the fabric of the seats and all this kind of stuff, the, the center console, uh, the way this stuff is rendered is just really, really sharp and impressive. And that's offset with the lighting, I guess, like they're, just their lighting model, they're really going for that photorealism. I think, and it does actually kind of capture it, which kind of creates this weird thing where it is almost, I, I mentioned this earlier to you guys, it's almost like an uncanny valley effect where it looks so realistic at times in many ways that the areas where it falls short stick out all the more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What sort of areas are you talking about? So like, for instance, you know, you look at the side of the track, like we know from sport as well, you look at, you zoom in on any of the textures, you zoom in on the trees and such, they're actually very high res. 
but you look at like the way like actual grass looks or the way flowers look in a field on the side of the track or any of those details like that there's still a difference they haven't figured out how to render them in a way that's actually completely realistic you know what mm -hmm. i mean so even though the assets mm -hmm. are very high quality and they're well placed it still doesn't quite look a hundred percent real and i think that actually creates that strange contrast between the two that's something i want to get more into in an actual video because by and large i actually think it's superb looking they've really captured the the tracks well it looks very very realistic uh we got to peek more at some of their new features such as uh the ray tracing as far as we know i believe it's been confirmed the ray tracing is only applicable to the modes outside of the actual racing so when they're showing the cars and the menus i think as well as during replays uh you get full ray traced reflections and the quality of those reflections seems pretty good although i think alex and i both noted it doesn't apply to transparent material so like the glass does not enjoy those reflections but the car body the distortion on the car you know you see those inner reflections even i love there's a shot where you're going around the corner and they actually have the camera inside the cockpit and you can see the ray trace reflections passing over the driving helmet that's the best that looks superb <laughs> What's your thoughts on the ray tracing then, Alex? I, I actually thought it was really well done. It really does enhance the realism of the cars. John pointed it out so well, like their initial uh, showing of the ray tracing was actually really not flattering in a lot of ways. I, I don't know. I don't know if that was because it was just a different target then, or if it was early on, which is really likely. Um, but here with like the lower frame rate target that we'll talk about later uh, for these kind of scenes, like the materials they're doing like not just super pixel perfect sharp reflections stuff, yeah but like they're yeah. actually doing like variable glossy so you have like yeah, the, variable gloss. yeah you have like the stretching and the, like the dimming and the uh blurring of the reflection based upon the material type and like i was looking at forza horizon 5's type of stuff their ray tracing in that game it was only the car that was in the reflection itself only the car body everything else was the real-time cube maps and here in the scenes where they do show the car going around and you know the the replays it is actually reflecting a lot of the environment around it obviously we'd have to get the game in our hands to say like which parts of the environment etc what kind of cuts would they made but this is pretty intense stuff so and it does a good job like it really does a good job the small faults that it has are just you know it's not that big of a deal in the end yeah they seem to be presenting ray tracing as the future of presenting these cars and these visuals in Gran Turismo. Mm -hmm. But it is the case that they do appear to have hit um, the limitations of the hardware, right? Yeah. You won't get ray tracing in game, which is, you know, a bit of a shame. Uh, but you can turn it on and off. So, you know, even though it's going to be cinematics only or replays mm -hmm. uh, and cinematics, if you're not keen on losing that lock to 60 frames per second hopefully there will be a frame rate mode that you can drop back to but certainly no rt in game i think this actually highlights uh, a mistake on their part in terms of targeting native 4k yeah because right. i think it's it's pretty clear you're not going to be doing native 4k at 60 frames per second with ray traced reflections on this kind of hardware right uh that's kind of outside reality which is yeah. why it would have been nice to see like an alternative mode that maybe reduces the, the GPU utilization in other areas in order to allow ray tracing either in races or enable smoother replay playback with ray traced reflections. Mm -hmm. Right. I feel like this should be feasible, uh, but they seem to be sticking hard to this high resolution mode for some reason. It's actually the same with turn 10. They both really focus on these high pixel counts and I get it. It does kind of make sense for the types of games that they're making, uh, but I do think an optional lower resolution mode would be highly beneficial. I mean, you right. look at GT Sport even, if you played that game in 1080p on a PS4 Pro, I believe you got 60 FPS replays, yeah. mm -hmm. which looked awesome. Uh, but if you ran it at the 1800p checkerboard mode, then they were 30. I would like an option like this, essentially. We should quickly talk about performance. Obviously, the game isn't final as far as we know. Uh, but it is very close to final, and I would assume that Polyphony would want to put their best foot forward. Um, essentially, performance, as we saw it within the state of play, was a game of two halves, right? Where the replays seemed to be running possibly with a raid facing mode on for most of them, if not all of them, and frame rate was unlocked. 
and um, I suspect it could have done with a 30 FPS lock because it was visibly jarring and um, I don't think it was quite what I'd expect from a GT game. Meanwhile, in-game, where we, we've confirmed that there is no raid facing, it looks like we're getting 60 frames per second or very, very close to it. Certainly enough to optimize within the current window available left to polyphony. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, interesting stuff there. I mean, it looks as though they've concentrated doubling down almost on the features side of things. For this particular presentation, gameplay pretty much there or almost there. So, And that applies also. They actually showed... Um, simultaneous split screen. That was um, interesting. Yeah, horizontal side by side. I was actually really happy to see that. That was 60 frames per second, albeit with a fairly simplistic uh, level of content mm -hmm. on display there. Um, but let's move on and talk quickly about um, just, I guess, one of the defining hallmarks of a polyphony digital game, which is to say presentation. Smooth jazz. <laughs> oh. that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get, we'll get the onto music. The, the, the music side of things a bit later. But certainly the presentation side of things, which is a polyphony hallmark and is crucial to making this game shine. I thought they did a fantastic job with that. And it could be the case that this is where, you know, the, some of the hardware benefits of the PlayStation 5 come to the fore. Starting with Gran Turismo 5, there was always a sense that Polyphony wanted to move into these more complex menu systems with a lot more sort of design flourishes uh, while enabling a greater set of features. Uh, but the problem is, is that you lost a lot of speed that way. They weren't able to fetch the data they needed fast enough to make for fluid menu navigation, especially in GT5 and 6. It wasn't as bad in sport, but those menus were less complicated. But all of them had the waiting time between, say, driving your car, getting into the tests, you know, going back to the menu, then back in. Like, everything you wanted to do, like, just in terms of, like, setting up your car, testing the settings, you know, doing the photo stuff, looking at replays, all of this was, was met with lengthy loading screens. Uh, here, it looks like they could conceivably finally solve those problems. So you still get a full-featured, even more uh, beautifully designed menu system than before with a rather interesting sort of 3D island concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it should be feasible now to jump in and out of the different modes, menus, gameplay, segments, and everything without waiting too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I think that, that could be a real game changer here. Mm -hmm. And... Is we'll just make the experience more pleasant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is this celebration of car culture that is just extraordinary, really. It's, it's kind of been a hallmark throughout the Gran Turismo series, but they're really doubling down on it here. There's so much to, to enjoy here, not just driving the cars, but in all of the kind of history surrounding them. And uh, we're seeing that in the, I think it's the clubhouse that they've got set up there. Okay. And all of this is tied together with this fantastic looking menu system. And I agree with you, John, that, you know, essentially the, the kind of friction that's built up within the Gran Turismo presentation system has been a bit problematic. But with the SSD, potentially that could be alleviated. And going back to this concept of a sort of full-blooded Gran Turismo game here, uh, 400 cars confirmed for day one with more following. 34 locations, over 90 layouts. I mean, this is going to be content rich, to say the least. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this is looking very, very impressive indeed. They can't do the legacy car thing anymore either, <laughs> if you recall. <laughs> right. No, yeah, that would be awkward. Yes. <laughs> Right, that was that was in uh, the PlayStation 3 generation, right? There Where was. they had cars from the PlayStation 2 era kind of shoehorned uh -huh. in to bulk up the content, right? They've done away with that, it seems, which, you know, you kind of have to at this point, I think. <laughs> so in terms of legacy stuff that I think is interesting is that this is going to be a cross-gen game, so I'm curious about what friction does exist that won't be on PS5 that will exist mm. on PS4 and PS4, uh, PS4 Pro. That's interesting, as well as the fact that John uh, mentioned before we did this uh, video, we're just talking about GT in general, but the last one, GT Sport, seemed to have static time of day based upon how they were doing their lighting. I remember there was like uh, some dis discussions of them using like offline ray traced bake lighting and things like that into textures or into vertexes into the environment and things like that. Uh, but here, uh, the dynamic time of day and sky is something that they actually showed off really well in the video and the, the sky rendering was really beautifully done. So I'm curious how they're going to do the, the indirect lighting this time around because it did look of rather high fidelity. I mean, 
here just on a racetrack, so it's actually hard to <laughs> see these things, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how that will also scale down to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro, because let's be honest, those are a lot slower uh, GPU-wise than the PlayStation 5. But that did look terrific, right? I mean, they're talking about mapping weather systems, uh, and you could actually see a little map in the corner there that shows the rain systems and as they move across the track, which was kind of mind-bending. Mm -hmm. Their dynamic sky system is just superb as well. They seem like, to be dynamically mapping where the stars are in real time, mm -hmm. which uh, I think they might have tried that in GT6 as well. This game feels like a game made by a very particular developer that wants to do things a very specific way and they will not compromise on those things. And some of those things may not jive with what people expect from a modern game, but it feels unique as a result. You know what I mean? It has that vibe to it. There was a lot of time and effort put into the time-lapse shot showcasing the uh, dynamic nature of weather as that well and the puddles forming and um, basically the, the water evaporating on the track, particularly in the areas that was, you know, that were getting a lot more traffic, that was looking terrific. So yeah, it's stuff like this that does bring into question how they're going to scale this onto the last generation systems because it really looked state of the art. Oh, we didn't mention it yet, but they finally have added full per pixel motion blur to the gameplay, which is a huge thing for me because I think it's absolutely crucial to creating a, a satisfying driving experience uh, in a racing game these days. I know some people really dislike that, and hopefully it's an option for them, but I think it adds a lot to the visual presentation. Well, let's talk quickly about some of the PS5 specific features, um, which were uh, shared with our colleague Martin Robinson at Eurogamer in a kind of behind the scenes briefing. Um, they're talking about 3D audio, third order ambisonics. They're actually quantifying the 3D audio. They're saying that it's equivalent to a 16 channel sound system, which I suspect John would <laughs> take issue with. Uh... 16 16 channels yep mm -hmm. that's what they said how many unique voices that's my question oh hundreds we know that already from the cerny presentation they also go into a bit more depth about the haptic side of things which they essentially equate to an extra audio channel that you feel and uh, the frequency range there 20 to 200 hertz and they think mm. that with that kind of range they uh, they have the ability to deliver a kind of higher resolution um, sensations through the hand, um, mm. differences in surface textures, the slipping vibrations from the front tires. That was actually in the presentation from the state of play. Uh, engine drivetrain vibrations, the resonance of the car body, um, the adaptive figures, which I think is possibly my least favorite element of the DualSense controller. They're using it to differentiate the difference in weight from the brake pedals of, of different cars. Ah which I, I guess is that kind of cool. interesting. Yeah, it could be interesting. Music side of things, going back to audio, 300 music tracks. Let's talk about some of the, the music <laughs> modes that they've added in. Oh boy. Which I found quite interesting. So we've got this new gameplay mode, which is the music rally, which looked to me basically like a sort of time attack, but instead of seconds, you have beats. Hmm. I'm kind of a bit baffled <laughs> by that. I think we're going to have to go hands on to see what that's all about. But the thing which has sort of baffled me the most is the music oh, replay. Hooked on classics, baby. Uh, hooked on classics. I mean, this takes me back to like the 70s, early 80s, where this stuff was in the charts. <laughs> I couldn't quite believe that this was appearing in a 2022 Gran Turismo title. That it essentially seems to be that they've just mapped changes in camera angles to yeah. specific beats. That's about it. But they, I, but they made yeah. a big deal about it, right? That's what I meant earlier about them wanting to kind of do their own thing. Is what it feels like. Like, who else would do this? It is very audience. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the audience is keyed on that. Uh, we'll, we'll have to ask in the comments below. All I want to know is, can I just like have non-licensed music playing of just like really nice, relaxing or high beat tempoed stuff that doesn't have lyrical content. That's what I would like in a racing I, game. I suspect yes, Alex, given the history of the series in terms of music, there's usually like a wide range of tracks that they actually had like an in-house composer uh, and musician and other people doing music for it in addition to licensed That's tracks. That's the stuff I so like. It, it is yeah. usually, and I assume with 300 tracks, it's going to be quite a mix. Mm. 
Right, yeah. I mean, again, in the background materials that uh, our colleague at Eurogamer was talking about, they were describing it as a mode not specifically for driving fast, but more for enjoying music while you drive. They're describing it as more of a relaxing experience, which uh, is pretty cool, I guess. Okay, well, look, let's wrap this up. Final thoughts, Alex. Uh, really good looking uh, game. Uh, I, I did, didn't really have as many complaints as uh, probably I could have had like with the last show and we saw where I was just like, there was some stuff that I thought just looked really dodgy. Uh, but them showing off the atmospherics rendering on top of the fact that I think the ray tracing is greatly improved. Uh, I think this is a great showing. I'm just really curious to see. I mean, there's been a rumored leaked version saying that GT7 is going to come out on PC due to the NVIDIA leak. I'm curious actually to see what they would change in that version if they if, they, if that did actually come to in existence. Yeah. Was that actually in the uh, GeForce Now leak? Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because thus far, it's proved to be a highly prophetic document. Yeah. <laughs> Jensen's prophecy. Yeah, yeah Jensen's <laughs> prophecy. Uh, final thoughts with you, John. I'm genuinely interested and excited to give it a shot. I think they're doing a lot of things really well. Uh, I'm still a little disappointed in the performance state of things, primarily in the replays. So I'll be curious to see how that shakes out. I mean, honestly, my only like legitimate real complaint right now is the the fact that it's online only. Mm, uh, right. I find that like borderline offensive. <laughs> And it's just, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't like that in, in games. And I really, I'm curious to see how it works in practice. If it's something more like the Hitman situation where you can still play it offline if you want, but you get some extra stuff from playing offline or if it really is like forced yeah. online. So either way, when, when the game comes out, I will have a report on that aspect as well as everything else. But honestly, I mean, the game itself looks great. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very interested in giving it a shot. And uh, certainly by the end of the year, assuming that the next Forza Motorsport does appear this year. That would be interesting. I mean, one of the oh. biggest videos I think we've ever done was your Forza Motorsport versus GT Sport. That is That was so much fun to make. I wish comparison discussion could be more civilized, like a smooth <laughs> jazz session <laughs> at a cafe. Rather than people trying to say, my console is better than your console, when at this stage in the game, if you ran GT7 on an Xbox and Forza 8 on a PS5, they'd probably be exactly the same. There's, not a, there's no difference. It's it's literally just the teams comparing against one another, yeah, which is fascinating. Yeah, priorities so, too. Like, I exactly. love that video. Like You just looked at the different priorities and the way materials or mm -hmm, detail mm -hmm, was done mm -hmm. between FM and... GT, it was it was revelatory. Yeah, yeah and I, I suspect there's a real like friendly competition between those guys. I mean, they're both putting in tons of work into this stuff, and they want to make the best thing that they can. But they each have their own vision on what this type of game should be, and I think that's really cool. But that is a discussion for another time. But uh, thanks so much for joining me on this one. Certainly can't wait to see the final game here. But yes, this was a fantastic showing. Um, but yes, if you did enjoy the video, please do like, subscribe, share, pick the bell for those notionally instant notifications. Whenever new content drops on the DF channel, DF supporter program, support us in what we do, get tons of bonus extras, high quality downloads, you name it. Uh, but that's all from us for now. Thanks for watching.